Last year saw what many would consider the birth of cloud gaming. And while streaming games isn't an entirely new concept, companies like Nvidia, Google, and Microsoft were making their way to the mainstream when it came to how they're delivering games in the next generation. One of the most unique facets about cloud gaming is the ability to play large AAA titles in a mobile environment, like on a tablet or a cell phone. Fortunately for users that use Android devices, this has never been an issue. Google's open ecosystem allowed these companies to essentially jump right in with no barriers whatsoever. This allowed companies like Razer to dive in headfirst into the pool with new and cool ways to play games on your phone. Last year, Razer introduced the Razer Kishi first for Android devices, and while it wasn't the first way to make your phone become a Nintendo Switch copycat, it became the most mainstream relevant way to do so. Even finding its way into retail stores such as Walmart and Best Buy. We even did a review on the Kishi last year, which you can check out in the upper right hand corner at this exact moment. With Apple being rather strict on their app store policies, it's taken a little while for companies like Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and of course Nvidia to bring their services over to the platform. And while since I am recording this video too right now, the only company that hasn't found their way to Apple in some kind of roundabout way is Microsoft. But that being said, companies like Razer were given time to maybe make some new devices for uh, iPhones to make their cloud gaming experiences or just mobile gaming experiences that much better. And since we did that video on the Razer Kishi last summer, Apple has now their own version of the Razer Kishi, but there is another company out there trying to get a little piece of that market known as Backbone, and they have a little own control of their own, and we're going to be talking about that today for Google Stadia. In an effort to be fully transparent, this isn't going to be a Kishi versus Backbone video, although I will make comparisons every now and then to the Razer Kishi. I'm going to do my best not to, but the, the whole point of this is to review the Backbone itself, which is an amazing piece of tech, by the way. That being said, if you do want to see a Kishi versus Backbone video, let me know in the comment section down below and leave a like and we will get working on that next so you can get a much more intelligent decision on which one is probably the right one for you. However, we're going to be talking about the Backbone exclusively and mostly we're going to be using Google Stadia to talk about it because that's kind of what we do on this channel a little bit. So uh, keep that in mind. But it is time to talk about the Backbone 1 from Backbone. Nice little thing they got going here. The Backbone One, as it is officially called, is one of the latest ways to turn your phone, and in this case specifically, your iPhone, into essentially the Nintendo Switch. And considering the Switch is still the most popular console in the world at this moment, this isn't necessarily a bad thing. Compatibility in the iOS world goes back years to the iPhone 6S. Pretty much if your iPhone can run iOS 13 and has a lightning port, you're good to go. And that includes my new 12 Pro Max that you see on screen. Yeah, um, we, uh, we're using an iPhone now. It's, I mean, if, if, you, if you've been a long time this listener of this channel or viewer of this channel, you know I, I go back and forth, all right? And I had to try out the Backbone. That's not the reason why I got an iPhone, but it's a nice phone. I'll give them that. <laughs> back to the Backbone. The Backbone is fully retractable and makes jumping in a very seamless transition. It's recommended to download the Backbone app, which will help you walk through the process of what the Backbone is, as well as bring in some additional social features, which include receiving notifications when your Apple friends are jumping into a game of Call of Duty, for instance. Before I get into the tech aspects, that's one huge thing I want to point out. This is compatible with Call of Duty Mobile, and while I am doing my best to refrain from the Kishi comparisons, the Kishi, at least on Android devices, does not work with Call of Duty Mobile. I digress, however. The Backbone controller houses buttons that mimic the Stadia controller of all things the closest. The offset thumbsticks, the bumper buttons, and triggers are designated as L1, R1, and L2, R2, respectively. The face buttons are in the same order and have quite similar font to the Stadia controller. But the biggest comparison to the Stadia controller in the backbone is the D-pad and three of the four option buttons, which are downright exactly the same or pretty damn similar. The fourth remaining button is the orange button, which will not only launch the Backbone app when on the home screen, but for an application like Stadia, it'll bring up the Stadia menu. It'll also let you back out of the game. And of course, you are able to jump into the Backbone app, as I just mentioned. But speaking of Stadia, when using the capture button on the Backbone, it will save it locally to the phone as opposed to the Stadia server, which personally, I think is a better option considering I would prefer to directly share my screenshots and clips from my camera roll as opposed to dropping a link from the Stadia website to do so. Additionally, with the Backbone, there are two components we haven't touched on just yet. There's a port for pass-through charging via Apple's Lightning Cable, and yes, 
There is a pass through for 3.5 millimeter wired headphones for all of you crazy headphone wearing people that don't like Bluetooth for whatever reason. The backbone itself doesn't require itself to be charged, nor does it require Bluetooth as it uses extremely minimal energy from the phone itself to power on. So enough of the basics. How does the backbone feel? How does it play and is it worth a hundred dollars because that is what the backbone is asking you to pay for it, this device well it, it's time to stop reading from the script and just talk to you uh straight through the heart or straight from the heart rather I had to throw a deal reference in there now the backbone is incredible in terms of the build quality this thing is built like a truck i Last time I did a video, I was like, oh, I don't have my key sheet here, and I actually had it, but um, I don't actually have the key sheet here, so I can't really compare the two physically at this exact moment that I'm talking to you. But um, in terms of the build quality, I'm going to compare it to the key sheet because the build quality in this is far greater. Uh, with the key sheet, you have that kind of rubbery, like uh, elastic y thing in the back to kind of stretch it out to your phone. And if you have a bigger phone that I usually go with myself, it can actually wear it out to a point where you'll lose connectivity because it won't kind of keep it uh, set in like this does. So with this being retractable, it's going to always be set in there very nicely unless, unless you do something to kill the retractableness of it. Now, I have big hands. This isn't news, uh, but so when you when you talk about a mobile gaming controller, it has to be able to conducive to that. Now, me having those big hands, after a few hours, I do get a little cramping. So that's something to keep in mind if you do have you know big mittens like I do. Um, the the thumbsticks, they're they're obviously on the small side because it's a mobile gaming controller, but they aren't as bad as I thought they'd be because I'm in a world where I don't find a mobile gaming controller even the switch even that has thumbsticks that are i think good enough for first person shooters on don't get me wrong you're probably not going to do very well competitively with this thing still because the thumbsticks are really kind of small but uh they're actually pretty good at least compared to the kishi i think they just feel more natural i guess i mean the kishis are a tiny bit bigger but uh again we'll say that for a comparison video with that um but they're not bad. Uh, I think the, the the bumpers and the triggers are pretty well done as well. Um, they're on. They kind of click a little bit. They're a little on the mushy side though too. Uh, but I think they perform very well in term in terms of like just button pressing all over this thing is really well, uh, really well done in my opinion. Uh, especially with the face buttons themselves. These actually click. Unlike the Kishi where it's very mushy. It's very, you, you, sometimes you may not even know if you're actually pressing it. Um, that's why people like mechanical keyboards so much because they know they're actually pressing the damn key, you know? Uh, so I like that, that they're clicking on here. The D-pad is probably my, ironically my favorite thing about this thing because if we talk about the D-pad on the Stadia controller, which I have been on record constantly saying I don't like it that much. Granted, I think I've built a callus up over the last year and a half that I've had this controller um, where it's not a problem anymore. But when I was first playing games like Mortal Kombat on the Stadia controller, it would destroy my thumbs because of how rigid it is. Um, as I said earlier, the Backbone controller is pretty similar to the Stadia controller in terms of like how it is actually set up in terms of what it looks like. The screen capture buttons are the same. The start and uh, select buttons are the same. The face buttons are the same. The triggers, the bumpers are all the same. The D-pad is extremely familiar, but this feels a lot smoother. Um, and I, I give Backbone credit for that. So I think that's an awesome added bonus to it. Playing platformers on here like Sonic on <laughs> Backbone is a breeze. And it might be my favorite way to play Sonic. Uh, which is kind of a weird thing to say, but when you play Sonic on a phone, it's a remastered version of it, which doesn't appear anywhere else, even like on an Xbox or PlayStation. And it has widescreen support, so you're not stretching the screen. It just makes the entire map wider, which is a really cool feature to it. So I think the mobile version of Sonic is the best, and the best way to play it is with the Backbone. So kudos to Backbone for making this a great way to play platformers, which is one of my favorite gaming uh, genres out there. So playing a game like Celeste is going to be perfect on this. I haven't jumped back into Celeste since I got this because I've beaten it already a couple times. So playing different games at the moment, but uh, platformers on this already grade A because, I, like I said, I already played Sonic on it. I just wish Sonic 3 would find its way to anything in 2021 because that is the best platformer of all time and i will fight anyone who says different you know i mean obviously i'm a sonic dude so uh the backbone in terms of how it feels i think this thing feels great the build quality is great um obviously it's an iphone exclusive they are working on an android version of this so the android users are going to be able to enjoy what the backbone brings I gotta tell you, uh, adding, uh, this doesn't matter to me, but this does matter to a lot of people. Adding the three and a half millimeter jack is super important to a lot of people. <laughs> now, I know I kind of joked about it earlier, but 
Having that additional feature, I think, is very well worth the cost that it might have made. This may have made it five dollars more, ten dollars more, whatever the case is. But a lot of people love it. A lot of people still use it. And there's also pass-through charging, which is on the Kishi, but. Um, I haven't t tested the pass-through charging myself because I don't have a charger that's long enough that I would want to just be tethered to my wall to do um, the charging aspect of it. Otherwise, I'd just play on my TV if I had to be tethered to anything. So uh, really cool that you have that additional features if you want it, if you need it. Uh, I use Bluetooth headphones, so it's right, it's kind of pointless for me to have it. Like, you know, I was kind of joking earlier, but uh, build quality, great. Feels great, plays great. The latency, I don't notice any. I haven't really noticed any with just playing mobile games on stadia at least uh it's just been pretty damn near flawless it's my second favorite way to play on stadia when it comes to my computer i have some serious issues i don't know if it's the computer itself or just the way chrome reacts to stadia but um playing on my phone is definitely my second favorite way to play on stadia just missing the chromecast ultra which is the ultimate way to play google stadia games but the backbone i think holds up very well for a hundred dollars you can't go wrong um especially if you have an iPhone, this I think is the best way to enjoy Stadia games or just any game in general, because this isn't just for Stadia, obviously. This is for, uh, it works with GeForce Now through the PWA app. It works, it will work with uh, Xbox Game Pass when that joins. Uh, it works with Remote Play for Xbox right now. It works with Call of Duty Mobile. Fort, no, it doesn't have Fortnite right now, sorry. Uh, that's a sore spot for some people, but it does work with pretty much anything that supports a controller. Like I said, Sonic is, uh, of course, compatible and one of my favorite ways to play Sonic of all things uh before it wasn't because i used i used the touch screen i was like well this kind of sucks but add a controller support and adding a controller that has amazing platforming um design in mind it's just great and if you don't play platformers with the d-pad you're doing it wrong but i want to know what you think did you pick up the backbone are you interested in the backbone one for your apple device let me know in the comment section down below or let me know on any social media that you can find me on which is pretty much just twitter and this little youtube channel that you are watching this on at the moment again if you are new to the channel don't forget to subscribe so you can stay up to date with videos just like this and let me know also in the comment section if you want to see a kishi versus backbone comparison video because we can definitely uh jump into a little bit more of a deep dive between the two because they're probably going to be your premier way to play uh, on a mobile environment, at least to make it a very Switch-like experience. And uh, if you want to compare it to like a claw experience or actually using a real controller and playing on your uh, phone with a clip, I think this is still the best way. It's going to be the less um, cumbersome way to play. It's going to be <laughs> the lightest way to play because you're not having an extra controller weight in there. This is incredibly light. It's 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 amazing. I think I've already put more hours into this than I did the Kishi. That's what it says about the backbone. So uh, link in the description to pick up the backbone itself. Doesn't help me out, but does help you get a backbone. So just go ahead and buy one if you're interested in it and you have an iPhone and you want to play games, um, you want to play your stadium games with this or any games really. Like I said, it's a mobile gaming controller for anything. So again, we'll catch you down the road. If you haven't already liked this video, in the meantime, have a good one. Thank you.